The best evidence for Prince Henry Sinclair's voyage to the New World in 1398 lies in Venice. The narrative and map of the noble and valiant Zeno brothers provide proofs of the voyage. So do the first naval cannon used in the Venetian wars. Certainly, a globe in the Museo Correa shows the brothers as Prince Henry's navigators to North America. The Zen map is too accurate for the voyage not to have happened. The Zen brothers, when they did their survey of Greenland, they must have done it and they must have been working for a Scottish prince. You can see on every single globe for 150 years after the Zeno map was published, it was their survey of Greenland you will find on these globes. Now this particular one is in the Museo Correa and it has something else very special about it. What happens is it commemorates the fact that Antonio Zen did sail to Canada. Estotilandia, the New Bretagne, Tierra de Labrador, discovered by Sir Antonio Zen, patrician of Venice in 1390, first of the other countries of America to be made known. This globe is proof that the Venetians thought that Antonio Zen reached America a hundred years before Columbus. They believed him, I believe him, and they believed his family. The Zens were the only great Venetian family to have a chapel of their own in the Basilica of St. Mark. And here it is, built in 1501, with money left to the Republic by the only cardinal of the family, Cardinal Giambattista Zen. Over here you can see the Zen coat of arms, those diagonal blue stripes, which were awarded to the family after the Cardinal's great ancestor, Carlo, saved the Republic at the great Battle of Chioggia at the end of the 14th century. And here is Cardinal Giambattista himself, the historian of the Battle of Chioggia and the biographer of Carlo, his famous ancestor, Admiral. I think you can see from the tomb, lying as it does so proudly, bang in the middle of this chapel, what a tremendous figure he was, what a power in the Venetian Republic, and of course, in the church. And so it was here, from the arsenal, that the Zen brothers sailed out with Venetian ships and skills to help Prince Henry St. Clair conquer and maintain his right to the Orkney and Shetland and Faroe Islands. Actually, the Zeno narrative does not give a reason for this first voyage north by Niccolo Zen. But certainly Venice, under his brother, the powerful hero Carlo Zen, wanted to extend its trade and influence in the North Atlantic. On the flank of this magnificent old Athenian lion, you can still dimly discern the outlines of an ancient runic inscription. The Vikings arrived in the Mediterranean some 400 years before the new Norwegian prince and Earl of Orkney decided that he needed Venetian expertise to help him sail his great new fleet, which he'd built out of the Templar resources. And one of the reasons we have for believing in the Zeno Chronicle is the fact that it reports these strange, obscure wars of conquest fought by a prince of Orkney, Shetland and the Pharaohs. Wars which would never have been recorded in Venice if somebody hadn't been writing home about them. And the Chronicle also explains the economic and strategic reasons why two members of such a powerful and distinguished family as the Zens would have sailed up so far north. The younger of the two brothers, incidentally, Antonio, was actually sent for by his elder brother, Niccolo, to come out from Venice with a brand new Venetian ship, complete with its latine rig and its mounted cannon. And he had to pay for it himself. The Templars were one of the first of the military orders to be created to defend the city of Jerusalem after its capture by the forces of the First Crusade. And from that moment on, they depended on Venice for the transportation of more knights and arms and supplies. And here, in their old Venetian headquarters, their records date back to the 13th century. When they were finally dissolved, their duties and their properties were taken over by their sister order, the Order of St. John of Jerusalem, now known as the Knights of Malta, who continue to run a dispensary and medical center here to this day. This is the great 13th century Dominican Church of Venice, San Giovanni e Paolo, St. John and St. Paul. And it's of particular interest to us, of course, because St. John was the patron saint not only of his great order of St. John of Jerusalem, but also of the sister military order, the Knights Templar. 
And here, in a niche set right up against the west wall of the church, is a ledger slab dedicated to the memory of the brother of that Niccolo Zeno who gave us the Zeno Chronicle and map. There it is, Melchior Zeno, his name, and the date, 1565. And immediately above it, what do we find? Twice repeated and beautifully carved, the Floriate Cross of the Temples. And in the little campo behind their palace, the Zen's own well, with their coat of arms on one side and on another, the eight-pointed Templar cross. The cannon Carlo Zen used in his early naval sea battles were recently dredged up from the waters of the arsenal. They are now kept in the Naval Historical Museum here. These are the first ship's cannon. You can see the rings around them, stop them from bursting. And more than that, you can see their breech loaders. They couldn't cast them in one piece at the time. They had to put in the explosive, close the breech. You can see they've got hand swivels on. They're mounted on wooden blocks. That was to turn them around, to hit the enemy, of course, to also stop the recoil from breaking the sides of the ship. More than that, you can see they're called Petriera, they throw stone cannonballs. They're very primitive things. Admiral Gattardo, the director of this naval museum in Venice, confirms that these cannon were the type used by Carlo Zen and were out of date by the beginning of the 15th century. They were then cast in one piece in solid iron and bronze. The Petriera, now found in the Arsenale in Venice, is exactly the same as one dredged from the bay near the French fortress of Louisbourg, where I believe Prince Henry made his first landing in Nova Scotia. This is the ancient cannon, which was dredged out of Louisbourg Harbor here. It proves without a shadow of doubt that Prince Henry Sinclair came here with his Venetian captain. It's written in metal. Look at the rings round this cannon. You had to have rings like that to stop the cannon from bursting because they couldn't cast a single piece center barrel. They were just rods welded together. And you've got the same swivel mount as you saw in the cannon in Venice. And indeed, the same breech here. You can take it out of this cannon. They had to have the breech and it proves it's a cannon of the late 14th century. It is an identical type of weapon. These were the cannon Carlo Zen used. It proves the Zeno narrative is true. It changes the history of the discovery of the new world. A Venetian captain came here with a Scottish prince and his expedition, a hundred years before Columbus reached the West Indies. But where did Prince Henry find the shape for his only surviving building in the new world? At the round church, at Egelsay. There is an ancient Norse church near Orkney of the 12th century. It's called St. Magnus, after Earl Magnus, who was killed here by a blow to the head from his rival Earl Hakon. And as you can see behind me, all the arches are built in the style of the Newport Tower. Most historians reckon this tower was built after the English settled Rhode Island. The colony's first governor called it my stone-built windmill. But it was inefficient as a windmill. All he did was adapt it for use as a windmill. What it is, it's a perfect example of northern medieval architecture. And there's no reason anyone should build it as an imitation of that. The tower is built of slates and similar stones in the style of the Norse building of the Orkneys, where Prince Henry Sinclair sailed from. Its plan is the Templar one, the ground plan of the Dome of the Rock and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. You can see it. Eight arches, the octagon within the circle, sacred, holy architecture. You can see the beams which supported the eight joists, which held up the floors and the roof, which could even have been a dome. But what's most interesting about the Newport Tower is this measurement. It is not an English yard. It is a Scottish L. Now, the Scottish L was three noughts or Rhine feet. It was the standard measurement for the north. And every single thing in this place is built 
to the Scottish L. Look, the diameter of this pillar is exactly one Scottish L. And as you will see, the inner diameter of the new port tower is precisely six Scottish L's. That fireplace on the first floor is built to an old medieval Nordic design. And anyway, if this place was constructed as a flour mill, who'd put a fireplace on the first floor and burn the whole place down anyway within a day? In point of fact, the light from that fire shone through a window placed strategically opposite, down to the bay. It was a beacon light, a lighthouse for any ship which sailed in to Newport Harbor. But although Antonio Zen was ordered to leave his Scots prints in the New World and sail back to Orkney, he wrote home to Venice everything that had happened. And in this same Zen palace of his grandfather, another Niccolo Zen, who had actually played with the letters and even torn some of them up as a child, eventually collected all the remnants, put them together with the maps and charts, and published them as the Zeno narrative and map which we still have today. But Prince Henry and his ancestors continued the Templar dream of founding a northern commonwealth in the New World. The final proof of the voyage of Zeno brothers to Louisbourg and Newport lay in their excellent map of Greenland, which led all northern explorers for 200 years. It was the best and only good map of its age.